Hello gamers, this is Sai, and welcome back to Which Way Games. What were those knights called again? And with that being said, let's get on with the video. When it comes to the knights of old, there are many stories to choose from throughout history. Such stories where knights would slay the dragon, save the princess, or even go on an epic quest. Now there's one set of knights that's widely known around the world, especially for the epic quest for the Holy Grail. These knights were the knights of the round table and their legendary leader, King Arthur. It is King Arthur, and these are my knights of the round table. Ah! Jesus Christ! Stories of King Arthur and the knights of the round table can be found within books, films and some video games from the past. Now obviously King Arthur would eventually meet his demise at the Battle of Camlan, but his legend continues. Now there is a knight in the gaming world that could only dream of this legendary status as King Arthur. This would be Sir Daniel Fortescue from the Medieval series, which has been remastered, but today I'll be looking at the original for the PlayStation. Medieval's development began in late 1995, under the working title of Dead Man Dan. Games director Chris Rell came up with the original concept of Medieval, However, he had previously worked in the James Pond series with gamers control an anthropomorphic mudskipper called James Pond. This mudskipper was a secret agent that was hired by the Secret Service to protect the seas from evil, as well as seduce the many attractive mermaids he encounters. Very much a parody of James Bond, and as for the following sequels, these would parody other film franchises such as Robocop. James Pond and the majority of the sequels that followed are part of the great library of games from the 16-bit era of gaming definitely a gaming series that I'll return to in future videos. Dead Man Dan would have inspiration from Capcom's Ghosts and Goblins, but without the controller breaking gameplay, and the art style of Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. Although the PlayStation 2 did have a very similar game to Ghosts and Goblins called Maximo, great fun to play, but not as hard as the 8-bit and 16-bit versions. Chris Sorrell worked alongside artist Jason Wilson. The pair then designed the concept of their title character, known as Sir Daniel Fortescue. The King's Champion, who was the greatest knight of all of the kingdom, but judging by his skeletal appearance, I wonder what he looked like when he was alive. <laughs> That's the stuff of nightmares. Over time, the development team working on Dead Man Dan moved away from the arcade platform style that Ghosts and Goblins was known for, and wanted to create an adventure for gamers to experience, very much like Nintendo's Legend of Zelda series. However, the team didn't have much experience when it came to creating a 3D game, very much like a lot of the game developers at the time. The development team were lucky enough to play baited versions of other successful platformers, such as Super Mario 64. So once again, the Italian plumber is responsible for another gaming series. It's Sir Daniel Fortescue, the secret brother of Sonic the Hedgehog. In the early stages of 3D gaming, the biggest problem was the camera. However, after playing Super Mario 64, the idea of using a freeform camera was a helpful tool that would allow gamers complete freedom to view the Kingdom of Wallamere. With all this done and dusted, Dead Man Dan would eventually have a title change and the game would be known as Medieval. And like always, let's go back to the past to see how Medieval was advertised. <laughs> The story of Medieval begins in the year of 1286. An evil sorcerer called Zarok has plans to take over the Kingdom of Gwalamir with an army of the undead, and then the rest of the world. Of course! The King of Gwalamir sends forth his mightiest champion, Sir Daniel Fortescue, to do battle the undead army, and then eventually battle the evil sorcerer. Sir Daniel leads the King's army to victory, and then the final battle begins. The pair battle for days with Sir Daniel finally killing the sorcerer, but losing his life due to his mortal wounds. At least, that's what the King says. In reality, Sir Daniel was struck down by the very first arrow fired from the undead army, and the King decided to cover it up and declare Sir Daniel as the hero of Wallamir. Zarok manages to escape the King's army and goes into hiding. Fast forward 100 years and Zorok is back, casting a spell to plunge Gwalamir into eternal darkness 
and stealing the souls of the living for his new undead army. However, Zarok accidentally revived Sir Daniel who over the last 100 years has become a skeletal corpse with a missing jaw and only one eye, as well as having a worm taken up residence inside his skull. Clearly annoyed that he was struck down so early and couldn't descend to the Hall of Heroes, Sir Daniel decides to defeat Zarok, save Gwalamir, and stop the other fallen heroes making fun of him. Gameplay has gamers controlling Sir Daniel as he hacks and slashes his way through the undead on his journey to save the Kingdom of Gwalamir. Throughout the game, various weapons can be collected, such as swords, clubs, as well as a crossbow. But the best weapon in many of the games can use is the arm of Sir Daniel himself. When no weapons are equipped, the skeletal hero of Gwalamir will rip up his own arm and use it to take down the undead army, which is very funny. As for the voice acting, this is top notch and will certainly make gamers laugh out loud when hearing the funny dialogue that occurs between Sir Daniel and the non playable characters. This is highly amusing and reminds me of another series of a similar comedic style called Discworld. And throughout the game, there are a variety of stages that require certain objectives to be met before Sir Daniel can progress on his mission. There are several books placed on stands that either offer Sir Daniel advice, jokes about himself, as well as the history of the stage. These stages range from the graveyard full of zombies, a flying ghost ship full of undead pirates, all the way to an enchanted forest surrounded by flying demonites. There are certain parts of the game where you have to revisit areas where certain objects are collected and to make the true playability, such as collecting keys, getting rid of certain enemies, as well as finding missing items for the fallen heroes. Being a hack and slash game with a combination of puzzle platforming really is a testament to the time of PlayStation games. At the time, gamers were making the transition from 16-bit gaming to medieval court gamers' eyes. Unlike Sir Daniel, who doesn't like arrows, it's a bit like that soldier from Skyrim and his knee. Now, despite the other fallen heroes making fun of Sir Daniel and his accident with an arrow, they eventually hate him with the use of their own weapons, as well as giving him valuable advice, but only the hidden challenge of souls is collected in the stage. Now, Sir Daniel isn't involved in sustained damage despite being dead. He can take damage when falling from very high, as well as being attacked by the various enemies of the game. Although, when he swings his sword, no enemy is safe, leaving plenty of chopped limbs all over the place. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Well, what's that then? Coming back to the story, after battling the undead army of Zarok once again, Sir Daniel finally comes face to face with the evil sorcerer. Zarok uses his dark magic to transform into a deadly and powerful monster. The pair then enter a battle that can be felt throughout the Kingdom of Gwalamir. But luckily, Sir Daniel defeats Zarok, and as the sorcerer lays defeated, he uses the last of his magic to bring down the castle on Sir Daniel in a last attempt to defeat the king's champion. Obviously, Zarok isn't the brightest as he's crushed in the process while Sir Daniel escapes. With the kingdom of Gwalamir saved, the evil sorcerer's magic begins to fade, restoring the souls back to the living, allowing the dead to rest once again. Sir Daniel realises that the same is happening to him, so he makes his way to his crypt, where he once again lays down to rest for eternity. As his soul leaves the skeletal corpse, Sir Daniel finally ascends to the Hall of Heroes and is held as a rifle hero of Gwalamir. When released, Medieval was well received by games and critics and was praised for its Halloween inspired atmosphere. It was also one of the first games to use the DualShock controller of the PlayStation, which at the time was a big thing, especially in gaming. The unique look of Medieval and its humor was praised, but sadly the game isn't without its flaws, especially when comparing it to other titles such as Banjo Kazooie on the Nintendo 64. The graphics aren't as polished as other games, but better graphics doesn't always make a good game. Now, Sir Daniel controls fairly well, which is handy, especially with the platforming sections of Medieval, and the level design really brings the Kingdom of Gwalamir to life, especially with the tongue-in-cheek humour that the series is known for. I did find myself not skipping cutscenes as I was engrossed with the story, but I did find myself laughing at some of the dialogue that came with it. Medieval has an endearing quality that over time has won an army of loyal fans of the series, and was a very successful game for the PlayStation. From the success, a sequel was made called Medieval 2, which is set 500 years after the original. In this game, another sorcerer called Lord Pelthorn has discovered the spellbook of Zarok. Casting the same spell that Zarok did 500 years ago causes the city of London to be overrun with the undead, and once again, Sir Daniel is resurrected but finds himself on display in a museum. It's then up to Sir Daniel to put a stop to Lord Pelthorn and get back to the Hall of Heroes. Both games are extremely popular with gamers, especially those that grew up playing on the PlayStation. And now that the original Medieval has been remastered, I can't wait to see how different the game is and what extra bits have been added. Maybe gamers will be able to explore more of the Kingdom of Gwalamir as well as the Hall of Heroes, but hopefully the other heroes aren't as mean as Sir Daniel this time.
Anyway, come back on Halloween when Simon Belmont has to deal with the evil forces of Count Dracula. But can the Prince of Darkness truly be destroyed and the world of men freed from evil? Thank you so much for watching and see you next game. Thank <laughs> you.